And if you've ever had that moment where someone comes up and asks you a question and you know the answer and it's at the tip of your tongue and you just can't remember it, Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Nisha and for today's video we are going to be talking about the 10 pieces of advice I would give to new incoming Med 1 students. I know it is very scary starting off your medical school journey just as a first semester medical student and there's just so much to know and there's so much that you have questions about and unsure about. I have this video to help you. I always get questions asking what piece of advice I would give and here are my 10 pieces of advice that I would give to a new incoming Med 1 student who are just starting off their medical school journey. The first piece of advice I would give is to create a study schedule and know your learning strategy. You really want to create a study schedule because this is going to help guide your learning throughout the semester because there's so many things going on like you have class, extracurriculars, you have your daily life to worry about as well, eating, sleeping, there's just so much to do and remember and you're eventually going to forget it especially with the amount of stress that medical students do go through. So you're going to want to create a schedule. This can be either on a planner, notability, on some sort of website, on your calendar, anything that you use that will help you to schedule out your activities. So you want to schedule out your lectures, waking up, making breakfast, taking your shower. You want to schedule when your studying is going to be, when your breaks are going to be, and when you're going to go to the gym as well. Anything that you have planned throughout the day, you're going to want to schedule it. And this is going to help you immensely because this is going to give you an idea of how much time you have to study throughout the day. And it's going to help to adjust what you're going to be learning and how much time you have to review the material. It's so much more effective. And also when you're scheduling your breaks, it helps tremendously because you can't study for six hours straight. You honestly need breaks as well. And this just helps to make your time flow a lot better and to be able to understand and learn the material as well with the amount of time that you're given throughout the day. And also you definitely want to know your learning strategy because not every student is the same. No two sizes are the same and that goes for medical students. Everyone is going to have a different learning strategy that's going to help them throughout medical school whether it may be flashcards, repetition, note taking, mind maps. It can be group study, it can also be teaching others as well. There's so many learning strategies that work for everyone else and you just have to make sure that you know your learning strategy and what's going to help you learn the material best because medical school is all about understanding and learning the concept and making sure you can take that concept and apply it to ensure that you pass all your tests and quizzes and just graduate from medical school. So once you conquer creating your schedule and knowing your learning strategy, you're on your way to success. My second piece of advice is to go to lectures. I know for some schools, you have the option of going to lecture and also watching the material online. I know there are a lot of videos that say you can save a ton of time with just watching the recordings. However, I can attest to this as well because with my previous semester, our schedule is a little bit different because our classes for semester two and three are shifted from the morning to the afternoon instead. And that kind of gave me like a weird vibe. So I ended up just watching the recordings online. However, my classes are in the mornings and I am so excited to go to lecture. I kid you not, I love going to lecture. I love going in class and there are so many advantages to take to it. I would highly suggest going to lecture because you can maximize the amount of learning that you can do. You're watching it in real time. You have the professor there to help you, to aid you, to ask questions. And you also have your peers next to you as well to enhance your learning, whether you have questions, bouncing off ideas. There are so many benefits to actually going to lectures in person. And it also kind of gives you an excuse to get out of your apartment, go to class and just enjoy your learning in real real time. My third piece of advice is to take advantage of your professors and your TAs. They are there to help you. They want to help you. So if you have any questions, if you need any clarification or you have ideas that you want to bounce off on them, by all means, definitely go ahead. I cannot tell you how eager my professors in class are to want the students to ask questions. They want you to come to their office hours. They want you to take advantage of all the time that there is to ensure that you get the best out of your learning because at the end of the day, we are making the sacrifice to go to school, learn the material, and then we want to become doctors so we have to ensure that we know this material like the back of our head so if you have any questions at all go to professors go to your TAs go to the TA sessions get that review in because there's no such thing as learning too much material the more that you know the better and the more clarification you get it just aids in your learning and also aids in your long-term memory so that way you're able to remember the material for a whole lot longer and do a lot better on your exams and tests my fourth piece of advice is to have a study buddy or a study group. There are so many benefits to having a study partner or a study group. You're able to learn together, bounce up ideas. Say you have no idea what one topic is, your partner might be able to help you with that as well. Or say this happens a lot, you're studying for a test and you completely forgot that there's a certain topic that you have to know. Your study buddy or your study group will help you to remember that that topic is gonna be on the exam. That has happened so many times and there's so many benefits towards this. You guys can also do questions together 
together, test each other, do flashcards, practice the material. You guys can even teach each other the material as well, which has so many benefits because you're able to actually know the material a whole lot stronger. If you make a mistake, someone will help you. And it just helps you to remember the information. As medical students, there's so much information to know. And sometimes we get mixed up, sometimes we forget. That's what this session is for when you're studying with a study partner or a study group. Another benefit of having a study partner or a study group is it gives you support and accountability. Sometimes there are some days where we don't feel like studying or just doing any work whatsoever. When you plan a study session with others, it helps aid in that accountability. And they're also there to support you as well because medical school is tough, let's be honest. There's so many things going on and sometimes we just need the added support from our group of friends and peers that are just there going through the exact same thing as we are. Another key benefit is the sharing of resources. Sometimes they may have a resource or a file that has so much information or help them in aiding their studying. They can share that with you. There's so many ways that it can contribute to your learning. So that is another tip I would give to an incoming medical student. My fifth advice I would give is to do Anki or flashcards. Every medical student talks about doing Anki. Honestly, in my time of medical school, I never got into Anki until this year in my third semester. And it has honestly been such a game changer because doing Anki or flashcards in general, whether you make them electronically or you write them out on paper, there's so many benefits to it. Firstly, it helps to enhance your memory and improve retrieval. Because of the abundance of information that we're learning, there's so many things to know. So it helps aid all the information into your memory memory and it helps to recall the information a whole lot faster. It also helps to put all this information into our long-term memory with the space repetition. Every other day we can probably do like maybe 50 flashcards, 20 flashcards, as long as we're staying consistent and doing these flashcards every day. They help to input that information into our long-term memory so that way we are able to space out the amount of information that we're learning, repeat it every day, and be able to remember it for a longer duration of time. And if you've ever had that moment where someone comes up and asks you a question and you know the answer and it's at the tip of your tongue and you just can't remember it that's what flashcards are for i can't even tell you how many times that has happened to me where you know the answer you know what letter it starts with and you're like what is it like you know it that's what flashcards are for it literally eliminates that part like that horrible feeling and helps you to remember all that information so much more better you get to see that on your exams because when you're looking at the question and you're like i know what that is i had a flashcard on that there's another benefit so doing on your flashcards will aid in your learning so much more better my sixth advice that i would give to the income med one class is to not rewrite your notes from high school from undergrad we have completely different techniques maybe rewriting your notes helped you in undergrad maybe it helped you in doing your masters but in medical school because there's so much information rewriting your notes is literally gonna kill your time there is no time to rewrite all the information you're learning everything from the PowerPoints all the stuff from the lectures from the textbooks it's just not gonna cut it you definitely have to change your learning technique when you go off to medical school and you want to find alternative learning strategies that will aid in your benefit to remember all this information. It can be whether you're a visual learner, you can make charts, tables, you can make mind maps as well. They're so effective in your learning. You can also make summary notes as well. Say you are a person who really likes to write out notes. I can definitely attest to that because I personally really like to write out my notes, make my notes all cute and have that very cute like aesthetic look to the notes. Honestly, I can say that is such a waste of time. If you are a key note taker, I would say make summary notes. Make one page summary notes of all the key information that you need to know because when you are studying for your exam there's just too much material to know and when you have these summary pages with you it aids so much better because you're able to remember the high yield topics as well as some of the key information that you noted down that you need to know that has been repeated in lecture it helps so much more better and also aids in the long term as well so that way you don't have like a hundred pages worth of notes that you have to go over because let's be honest at the end of the day when we graduate we won't be able to use those notes anyways but if we have summary charts and we have like little things that aid in our studying it would help so much more better and also utilize your iPads as well. Utilize the tools that you have. If you have an iPad, there are a lot of templates and there are a lot of note-taking apps that come with templates that will help in your study sessions. So that way you are able to make your notes more effective, more concise, that aids in your study. So that way you are able to remember the material for longer and also you don't have 50 pages worth of notes that you have to go over. My seventh piece of advice, and I have to say this is such an important piece of advice, especially if you are a student who's going away from home or going to another country studying 
abroad and going off to medical school, you want to stay away from the campus drama. I can't even say this enough. I have seen so many students who have failed their exam repeated a semester because of the drama that's taking place on campus. And you have to remember this. This is from my personal experience is that when you go away to another campus, you're also going to have like a lot of personalities coming together in medical school. Everyone comes from a different background. They come from different experiences. And sometimes all of that put together can just create so much drama, whether it's like friend drama, relationship drama, whatever drama there is, you definitely want to stay away from it. You want to keep apart from it. You definitely want to focus on you. And this one piece of advice has definitely gotten to me throughout medical school. And even though you may have very close friends, you may have very close peers, you always want to make sure that you are taking care of yourself because at the end of the day, you're the one who's taking the exam. You're the one who's writing the quizzes. You're the one who's studying your butt off to make sure that you pass all your classes, get to clinicals and graduate medical school. So you have to be there for you. You have to put the time, you have to put the energy and you have to stay away from things that do not benefit you. It can be hard for sure because you definitely want to be included in a lot of the things on campus, but you have to ensure that you are doing what's beneficial for you because medical school is very costly and you do not have the time or energy to waste it on things that do not matter to you. So stay away from the drama, worry about yourself, put yourself first in this instance and you will do well in medical school. My eighth piece of advice is to get plenty of sleep, at least six to eight hours of sleep per night. I know as medical students, there's so much to study. You're going to be up late at night studying, reviewing, making sure that you get all the information you need crammed for an exam. But I have to say, do not sacrifice that for sleep. Your sleep is very critical in your medical school journey because not only does it help in your energy and your health, but it also helps with memory consolidation, making sure that memory gets put into long-term memory during your sleep. It also helps with better concentration, problem solving, better judgmental skills, which are very critical in the medical field. Sleep helps to improve your focus, concentration, and attention, especially in lectures. And this will lead to better test scores, exam scores, and cognitive function as well, which are very critical in your learning. I cannot stress this enough. It also helps in your mood regulation and reducing stress and anxiety. Because let's be honest, we're always stressed, we're always anxious. We're always trying to think of like better ways that we can improve our studying. And that can be stressful. Like medical school is indeed very stressful. So you always wanna make sure you are getting at least 68 hours of sleep per night in order to improve your overall cognitive function and overall well-being while you're in medical school. My ninth piece of advice is to prioritize your self-care. Medical school can be very intense and demanding, but do not forget to put time for yourself as well. Please do not neglect your physical or mental health. This means getting some exercise, doing some yoga, focusing on your mental health, because if your inner body is not healthy, that is going to reflect in your outer environment as well. So always remember to take that time to do self-care, whether it may be going to the gym, going to yoga, Pilates, doing your skincare routine, taking that extra time to get ready for bed or have like a really good morning routine, anything that you need that adds a little bit more happiness to your routine, definitely ensure that you make the time to do that for yourself because that matters as well in your learning. When the going gets tough, do not forget the reason why you decide to go to medical school. It is very easy to get lost in the journey of medicine and forget the purpose of why you are there in medical school. I always say, write down your purpose on a little sticky note and post it somewhere where you can see it every day, whether it is in your bathroom mirror, on your desk, on your vanity, wherever you feel like you need the motivation the most and always have that as a reminder of why you are doing medical school. It can be very tedious. It can be very draining and stressful, but never forget your purpose and why you are there. You are there to become a doctor. You are there to make a difference in other people's lives and you have a passion for medicine. Whatever your purpose is, make sure you write it down and never forget it and never forget to make that time for yourself because your self counts and you deserve to prioritize self-care in your medical school journey. My last and final piece of advice I would give to new incoming med one students starting off their medical school journey is to give yourself a break. Take a break, get the rest that you need, whether it may be going to a restaurant, going to the beach, taking a road trip, going on a flight, reading a book, going shopping. How big or small that thing is, make sure you are giving yourself a break. You deserve a break. We cannot be studying 20 hours a week, seven times a week. Like that's just literally impossible and you are going to burn yourself out. So remember to take a break. This can be going to a city that you really wanted to, reading a good book, watching that movie, starting a new television series, whatever it is, make sure you take that break and take that much needed rest that you deserve and go out and enjoy yourself as well. Because even though we're in medical school, this is our life. This is our journey. We cannot forget to live our life because we are giving up our 20s, our 30s, our 40s, whatever age you are doing medical school, we are giving that time up to study as well. But we cannot forget to live our life at the same time. It can be hard though to manage your time, but with proper time management, we deserve to give ourselves a break at least once a week or whenever you feel like you deserve a break. Remember to give yourself a break and give yourself grace. You are doing amazing. You are in medical school. You are on a journey to be a successful doctor and just never forget that. So those are 
my 10 pieces of advice that I would give to new incoming Med 1 students who are just starting off their medical school journey. It's very exciting. I'm very proud of you. Give yourself a pat on the back for getting into medical school. It is going to be stressful. It is going to be a very demanding time. But always remember, you got this. You are your best supporter. You are intelligent and strong. And you will get through this and become the best doctor that you can be. If you guys have any pieces of advice that you would like to share to the new incoming Med 1 class, drop it down below in the comments as well. Share your tips and tricks and your advice. And it can even help returning medical students as well, whether you're in basic sciences, your clinicals, you're about to graduate, doing residency. There's no specific time or place where these pieces of advice will not help you. Anything helps, anything to help us get through medical school, drop it down below in the comments as well and share your wisdom with the other medical students going through their medical school journey. So I hope you guys did enjoy that video on the 10 pieces of advice that I would give to the new incoming Med 1 students. As always, if you guys love watching my channel, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below, turn on your post notifications, give this video a thumbs up, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys!